Cinnamon Bear. Well, the most magical and enormous flying hat landed Judy and Jimmy and their friends in a wonderful land of ice and snow. Just as Queen Melissa instructed them, they asked the first person they met where to find Nicky Frutal. He was a snowman and told them that Mr. Frutal could be found in a white palace. Up the steps they went and were met by Nicky Frutal, a little elf dressed all in white fur. Nicky invited them in and led them to a door, a door which is just about to open on the gentleman who can tell them how to get their broken silver star fixed. And who do you think it is? Well, I'll let Judy tell you. Santa Claus. Willikers! You don't mean the real Santa Claus, do you, Mr. Frutal? Of course, Jimmy. And no one else. Honest Injun? Honest Injun. All right, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Gee, Willikers! <laughs> welcome, welcome, my children. Come right in. I've been expecting you. Well, thanks, Santa. Don't mind if I do. Your invitation is most acceptable. Uh, thank you. Come on, come on, Judy and Jimmy. Now, don't be bashful. <laughs> Go ahead. There's nothing to be frightened about. I guess maybe I'm silly, but it's kind of exciting to meet the really, truly Santa Claus. <laughs> yes. You see, we never thought we would, and... Well, it's kind of like shaking hands with, with the president or something. <laughs> well, well, don't you feel that way now? Don't you know that I love children better than anything in the world? I guess so, no, but... Now, now, there's nothing to be frightened of. Come on and sit up on my lap while I finish reading a few letters, hmm? Thank you, Santa Claus. There. Up, daisy <laughs> Comfy? Oh, yes, thank you, Santa Claus. Now, Jimmy, suppose you sit on the arm of my big chair. How about it? Okay, Santa Claus. You know, this is quite a treat for me, Judy and Jimmy. The most I ever get to see of children is when they're sound asleep. Don't they ever see you? Oh, no. If they're awake, they can't see me at all. That's it. Judy and I wondered why we didn't see you that Christmas we stayed awake all night and watched. But our presents were there Christmas morning just the same. <laughs> I remember that time. I fooled you youngsters, didn't I? Now, by the way, I got your letters this year, too. You did? Gee, that's swell. And I hope you'll be quite satisfied. Now, let's see about your silver star. Did Melissa tell you what happened to it? Oh, yes, indeed. I had quite a talk with her about it. Oh, it's too bad you had so much trouble. How did she talk to you, Santa Claus? By short wave. Oh, I'm quite a fan, you know. Radio is my hobby when I have time to spare. Now, will you put the star on my desk so I can look it over? You bet. There it is. My, my, my. Certainly is all smashed, isn't it? But that can be fixed. Oh, yes, easily fixed. Can you fix it in time for Christmas? Of course, you understand how important it is for us to have it by then. Ho, 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 ho. Indeed, I do. I'm not going to fix it myself. No, that's a little out of my line. But I will take you personally to a man who specializes in that sort of work. Oh, Nicky. Yes, Santa? Have my sleigh and reindeer ordered, will you please? And, oh, yes, 
Have a couple of fur suits sent up for Judy and Jimmy. It's pretty cold out. How about Crazy Quilt and me? What? Oh, you were so quiet, Patio Cinnamon, that I almost forgot about you. Well, you're pretty well fixed by nature for the cold country. But I don't know about the Crazy Quilt Dragon. Uh, why not Santa Claus? Well, you look as if you were just a bit the worse for wear. Let's see. A number of seams ripped and... Oh, quite a tear over there. Oh, yes. I did that when I tobogganed down to your palace. Oh, gracious. Well, I think a bit of tailoring wouldn't be amiss. Oh, Nicky, call the tailoring establishment and arrange for a complete overhaul for the Crazy Quilt Dragon. Oh, thank you, Santa Claus. I'm not too vain, I hope, but I don't feel my sartorial best when I've got so many rips and tears. Is that all, Santa Claus? Mm. Yes, yes, I think so. All right. Send up two fur suits to Santa Claus's office immediately. And uh, what uh, size? He wants to know what size, Judy. I don't know. I guess about like yours. Size nine and three quarters. Nine and three quarters, okay. Have the sleigh and reindeer out in front of the palace. Sleigh and reindeer, okay. And tell the tailor shop to expect one crazy quilt dragon for a complete overhaul. Complete overhaul for Dragon. Right. All right, now. Come along, Judy and Jimmy and Cinnamon Bear, and follow me. Uh, Nicky Frudel will show you where to go, Crazy Quill. Oh, thanks ever so much, Santa. Complete overhaul, eh? Hmm, not bad. This way, Crazy Quill. Well, uh, goodbye, all. Uh, oh, when I see you next, I promise a complete revelation. <laughs> now, just a second while I button up my coat. <laughs> Yeah. Here are the fur suits, Santa. The service is extra good today. Oh, fine. Now, help yourself, children. Uh, you need any assistance with the fastenings? No, thank you. Gee, Willikers, we look almost like cinnamon bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, all set. Mm. Oh, it's pretty chilly out. Well, we don't mind it now. I don't see the snowman. Well, I expect he's gone to lunch. Oh, look, Judy. Here come the reindeer. Oh, my goodness. Aren't they pretty? Gee, they're swell. Would you let me hold the reins a while, Santa? Oh, I'm afraid not, Jimmy. You know, these reindeer are funny. They won't obey anybody but me. You see, they're my own special private reindeer. And this is the sleigh in which I make my yearly visit to the world. All right, everybody. Here we go. Hi, Dunner and Blitzen. My goodness. Can you get everything into this one sleigh, Santa? Well, not as much as I used to. I have to tie on a couple of trailers now. Oh, see that building over there? Sure. What is it? That's the candy factory. Oh, it's a good thing the candy pirates don't come up here. <laughs> oh, we take care of them all right. Now, over there is the doll factory, Judy. And that one back there is the mechanical factory. What are you making there, Santa? Oh, toy trucks, engines, bicycles, electric trains, all sorts of things. You know, I have a crew of specially trained brownies and elves in each of these factories, and they're busy all the year round. Do you ever have anything made in the big palace where you live? Oh, a few special things, but that's where the toys are stored when they're finished, and every day there's an inspection in the grand hall. Oh, maybe you'd like to see one of the inspections after your star's fixed. How about it? You bet. Who is it you're taking us to visit, Santa? Oh, you'll see in just a minute, Judy. His house is right over here. Oh, boys, oh! Now, this is one of my best friends. Listen to him sing. That'll tell you who he is. I'm Jack Frost, the world's most famous painter. And I deal in winter fixtures that are lovely to behold. I can paint a million pictures with my brushes and my mixtures. But I like to work much better if my feet were not so cold. I'm colder than November. I'm colder than an Eskimo. I'm colder than a clam. I'm colder than December. It's impossible to realize how cold I really am. I'm Jack Frost, the world's most famous painter. And according to the senses, 
I'm the only one who knows how to frost the roofs and fences with such gorgeous consequences. But I'm feeling most despondent cause my nose is almost froze. I'm really rather chilly. I'm colder than a hundred polar bears have ever felt. This may sound rather silly, but I'd buy a radiator if I thought I would not melt. Bless my stuffing. So that's Jack Frost. I felt his fingers many a time, but I've never seen him. Look at all the icicles on his cap. Hi, Jack. Some friends to meet you. Here's Judy, Jimmy, and the cinnamon bear. Uh, how do you do? Uh, come in, won't you? Thanks, mm. Mr. Jack Frost. Oh, I'm glad you dropped in. I'm on my vacation now. Nothing for me to do out into the world after the snow comes. Uh, Jack, my little friends, Judy and Jimmy, have had a bit of trouble with a silver star which belongs on top of their Christmas tree. Yes. It's been badly smashed and needs fixing. Uh, show it to him, Jimmy. Here it is, Mr. Frost. Oh, that'll be easy. I'm extra good at stars. I've often admired your work on the windows, Jack Frost. Thanks, thanks. Yes, I do fairly good work. But I'll never be really satisfied until I learn how to frost a chocolate cake. Oh, Mother can frost cakes like everything. Maybe she'd teach you. Good. Next time I'm down your way, I'll try to find time for a lesson. Now, if you'll just step this way into my laboratory. My, my. Just look at all the brushes and things. Willikers, it's wonderful. Uh, this is where Jack does all his research work. Plans all the designs for his window displays. It's beautiful. Uh, now, let's see about the star. Hmm, this won't take a second. Just a bit of magic snow cement here, and here, and here, and there. Oh, why, why look, Jimmy. Well, Gee. bless my stuffing. Our silver star is all beautiful again, just like it was before. Can I touch it, Mr. Frost? Oh, oh not for a minute. I'll put it here on the windowsill for a bit. It has to be exposed to the cold north wind to get good and solid. Now, while we're waiting, I'd like to show you a few of the designs I'm working on for next year's frostings. Hmm, there's a big star in one of your designs. You like stars, Jack Frost? Better than anything. How many points do you put on your stars? He puts five, Judy. You can count them for yourself. I wonder how many there are on our star. I'll look and see. Jimmy, Santa! Why, what's happened, Judy? The star! It's not on the windowsill. It's gone. <laughs> Well, if it isn't one thing, it's two others. I was positive Judy and Jimmy had the star for keeps this time, but that's where I was mistaken. One thing is certain, however, if they don't get it mighty soon, it'll never be on top of their Christmas tree by December 25th. Let's be sure to listen next time and see what's happened. <laughs> 